I want to take some time to review documents and how to analyze them. What I'm really looking for is for you to use textual evidence to be able to use that and then talk about it in an informed way so that when you're analyzing the documents, you're taking a chance to look back at the documents themselves and what they say and then really explain what your thoughts are based on the contents of the documents. So in order to try to further relay what I'm looking for in this, I'm going to look at the Navajo creation story and look at really just one part of one question. So in question two, one of the questions that is asked is in what ways do the stories define identity? And as they refer to stories, they're looking at the creation stories that we read for this week. So I'm going to begin with here the um, visual of really what the story represents for the Navajo people. I'm going to look just at the Navajo people, but in your answer, what I would be looking for is both a reference to the Navajo creation story as well as the Iroko Iroquois creation story because in looking at both of those, they're very different stories and they have a different take on how it defines their identity. So what this visual does is it really just kind of synthesizes all the information within the creation story, placing not only the rivers that you read about within the creation story, but also the colors that are referenced, as well as the men and then the peaks that you see later on in the story. So you can take a moment, just kind of glance at this, but I find that visuals are really helpful to distill the information that we read about in the creation story. So the question, coming back to that, is how does the beginning, or the Navajo creation story entitled The Beginning, define Navajo identity? So in answering this question, we want to get very specific. We want to think about what does this creation story tell us about the Navajo people? Why is it important? Why do we want to start here? And how can it help us understand the relationship that's going to eventually transpire between the Navajo people and other people that they meet? So, in answering this question, the Navajo creation story actually defines Navajo identity in very various ways. So first of all, it helps us understand how they were created, their own perspective of how they were created. It also helps us understand how Navajo people relate to one another and other people. It will eventually help us understand their social and political systems. It actually lays out kind of a map or a marker of what those are going to look like and what they even continue to look like today. The Navajo creation story tells us how Navajo people believe they should treat one another, as well as the world around them. And then finally, it helps us understand the Navajo's relationship to the land, both a spiritual relationship as well as a practical relationship, as we see when they receive the seeds. So in referencing the text, one of the things that we see in the first world and helps us to begin to understand this relationship of the Navajo people and how they are identified and created within the creation story is this quote, the black cloud represented the female being or substance. The white cloud represented the male being or the substance. So what we can see here is that Navajo people are actually created from and of the earth. They are being created from the clouds and in this creation, we see as they morph through those four worlds, eventually into the fifth world, um, they become and change into different beings, but are originally formed from the earth. So what we also see in this creation story is the relationship between man and woman is defined. Traveling through each world, one of the major themes in this creation story is this epic quest that we see between the relationship of man and women and their desire to try to get along, but also be separate. Um, so as they're going through this story, we see that 
women begin in a world in which they are apart from men. Um, they don't mind being alone, as we see in the story. That's what the story reads. Um, they, however, at one point in the story wanted meat, and so they decided that they would come up with a plan um, where they could get that meat. Um, and what resulted, as we also see in the story, is that from their actions, there is the birth of the monsters and the giants who kill men. So kind of a response in the story is the men decide that they're going to revolt, and as a result, the men then kill the female, sheep, lion, and antelope. After those two events occur, what we then see um, is the men have some sort of retribution. They're struck by lightning, and they are warned that if they continue with those actions, that they are going to um, eventually end poorly, and they're going to need to stop. And the result of this is that there is a reconciliation between men and women. The result of this reconciliation is mirrored in the text, and we are further told within the text on page 51 that now we can see for ourselves what comes from our wrongdoing, he said. And this is what comes from those two different separate events. And it helps us define and understand the relationship between men and women within Navajo society. This relationship is defined actually within the language by a word called Hosan. And the name, that word, actually uh, means, within our language, beauty, balance, or harmony. And so the result of those interactions is that what they find out is because of their interactions, they need to actually come back together and find balance, find harmony, find a way to live with one another as well as with the people on the earth and the other animals of the earth. So the Navajo relationship the Navajo creation story also shows us the Navajo people's relationship with the earth. So here I put down a quote, um, and I kind of distill most of the narrative that kind of shows that relationship with their earth. So after the wasps and the different people, any people there came, the beetles, the dragonflies. And the people quarreled and they fought amongst themselves because of the strife, and they climbed up from the world of darkness, where they were still fighting and killing. Then they climbed up into the third world, where they were given the sacred mountains and seeds. So as we progress through each level, we can see that there are different animals, but there's quarreling among those animals, and they continue to go to in the different parts of the earth, or the second world, third world, and the fourth world. And as they travel through those worlds, they eventually get to the point in the fourth world where they're given the sacred mountains and seeds finding, as we found with the men and the women, that in that third world where they find out that if they don't live in harmony and in balance, that they're not going to be able to live together. So with this, we also see that the Navajo develop their relationship with the earth. They, once they realize they're going to have to live in harmony, are given the sacred mountains. They are given the seeds. From these sacred mountains, they kind of define the boundaries of the Navajo nation, as well as their religious ideas and beliefs. We have deities um, who are associated with those mountains. Uh, the seeds also have religious significance and are still a large part of the Navajo people's lives today. From the creation story, and once again a part of the Navajo identity, is their social and political structure. So from the creation stories, you see the four matrilineal clans come out of the story. So matrilineal clans are clans or groups of people who are based on the mother, and the lineage of those people are traced through the mother. So this whole idea actually comes from this creation story. We also see their political structure is defined by this creation story defining once again their identity. So we see that they have a chief. They also have rules that guide the clans, those four original matrilineal clans that are coming directly from this creation story. And you can see those transcend this 
creation story, and they are actually present within the Navajo Nation's tribal court today. So it's not all distilled within their code. However, a large part of the Navajo Nation, um, they today have a Supreme Court themselves, is informed by their creation story and their religious beliefs, which derive directly from this creation story. So as you can see, as you're answering these questions, obviously you're not going to dig as deep as I just did. But what I'm looking for is a strong reference to the text, as well as an explanation of how your answer ties back to that text. I look forward to looking at your document analysis and hope that you're able to get a little additional information about the Navajo creation story.